Regent Street, it's always a little bit of a sad sight just after the Christmas lights have been switched off. Look, they're still up there, but they won't be on today. This makes you feel a little bit sad. <laughs> so the weather is rather against us today, doing a proper walk, I'm afraid, making a, a full video, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna leave you without anything at all next Sunday. Today is Sunday, it's been raining all day. In fact, this is the, <laughs> this is the lightest the rain has been. So I was going to make a nice video for you walking around Mayfair, but I won't attempt that because I can't have a mic plugged in. I'm doing this with my action camera and I can't have a mic plugged in because it'll, it'll get destroyed by the rain. So I thought what we'd do is let's just walk down Regent Street and I'm going to show you one of the most magical little places in London. And luckily, it's covered. I hope it's open. So, yeah, I love this place. It's very special. Hanover Street's interesting. Maybe we should just have a little detour. Should we have a little detour? No, let's stick to Rio Street. Liberty's department store over there. That will be in uh, the second part of the Soho video. Maddox Street. Actually, I am going to go down Maddox Street because I'm intrigued by that church down the end there. I'm not entirely sure what it is. This is the thing, you just got to embrace circumstance sometimes. This isn't what I exactly planned to do today. But I'm doing it anyway. And look, Pollen Street, that would not have been on my notes. Look at this, I love these little winding streets you get around here. I mean, maybe we will just do a bit of a, a bit of a Mayfair stroll. It's just, I don't really, I can't really deliver the info like this. I suppose as well, this is the reality of London, right? We do live on a very wet island between the North Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. You know, it rains a lot. Lovely little bit of mosaic work here. Look, delightful. So we've got the Mason's Arms pubs and the back of this building here, back of this church. I mean, it might not actually be a church, but I can see a sign there on the back. Let's go and, let's go and have a gander. Now, I'm not just saying this, but I did wonder if it was St George's Church. Partly because it's the only church I associate with uh, with Mayfair, St. Jo St George's Church. I think they're on Hanover Square. It has a lot of concerts, I think, here. And this here is Mill Street. And of course, the topography of Mayfair is sort of partly defined by the fact that Tyburn runs through it. So it's kind of, you know, it's a river valley. It's got hills. It's got a great topography. You can see it rising on the other side there, can't you, I hope? And that is the, uh, the Mason's Arms pub over there. Look forward to hearing in the comments what you think about that. It's got to be people that worked around here, used to drink in there after work. It's got that kind of vibe, hasn't it? It's an after work pub. And just down the hill from St George's in Mill Street here, we have the Windmill Pub, which is a very sort of bright and open pub, isn't it? And it also obviously tells us where the, where the name, where the mill comes from. I thought it might have been associated with the Tyburn, but it seems to do it actually comes from the windmill here. But I'll mention here that I, um, I do put videos on TikTok and what works on TikTok is, is not cut downs of my YouTube videos but me stood outside pubs taking a single shot of the pub going here's the Mason's Arms in Maddox Street any of you drink in there what's that like that's what works for me on TikTok <laughs> so if you like pub content pub talk I'm uh, sort of a burgeoning or a wannabe pub talker. I'm sure actually now saying it out loud, it seems very apt that that is kind of like a little bit of a sideline for me. I don't know if it'll come out on my action camera, but you can really see the way the road drops down there, which I guess that must be the Tyburn running through there. I'll link below to a video I made of a walk along the Tyburn. But um, yeah, I mean, because a pronounced dip and then it rises again. St. George's is wreathed in scaffolding obviously having some work done on it but that's a fine i'm going to stick my neck out and say portland stone church that and it's really interesting to note the obelisks on either end of the entrance here which i guess i don't know if they were built i think this church is 18th century so whether the obelisks were added later as in the uh, the victorian obsession with Egypt, ancient Egypt, Egyptomania as it was known.
this is almost my dream shop here in St George Street, Antiquarian Maps. It's called the, what's it called there, the uh, Outer Gallery. Look at these. I mean, that is really beautiful, isn't it? Made in Amsterdam, that's only £6,500. Oh, what a bargain. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, that doesn't look like a particularly old map of London. It doesn't also look like it's for sale, does it? Another London map. This is a this is a trendy brand, isn't it? A bathing ape. I mean, some interesting looking window displays. I'm probably not going to go for a silver onesie where you zip everything up. Probably not. I'm not sure that's me. And over the road there, we have uh, we have Sotheby's, the famous Sotheby's auction house. This is Bruton Street here. Not a street, I really think about a great deal, to be honest with you. Savile Row goes off to the right, but I think we should, I don't know if we should go down Savile Row, because when I do eventually do a Mayfair video, Savile Row will be a big part of that, so I don't want to blow it now with my action camera in the rain. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm actually quite enjoying making a video like this, just kind of just grabbing stuff as I go past with this little camera here. It's actually quite, liberating and it also actually is a really good way of conveying the experience of what it is to walk through the city when you just go for a stroll a dare which is what this has become and you just allow your attention to be drawn by whatever captures you whatever draws you in to be guided by the psychogeographical articulations of the city or some such waffle mayfair was a great place for spies. It's where the OSS were based during the war. It's also where MI5 had offices as well after the war and it's where um, some of the Cambridge spies lived. Donald Maclean lived in Mayfair as well. And this is an incredibly significant place here, Trail Finders. I went into, I don't think it was this branch of trail finders, it was in a slightly different place. I believe it was around Piccadilly Circus where I went in there in 1994 and bought my round the world plane ticket, which was one of the most thrilling things I've ever done. Great adventures start in this building. You can see people in there now booking their life-changing trip. Back on to Regent Street now. And there's Hamleys on the other side, the famous Hamleys. I used to love going in there to buy the, buy the kids their Christmas presents. There are some proper fancy shops along here. This is Michael Kors. I imagine those handbags are quite expensive, right? It's not really my line, handbags. You've got all these tempting little alleyways that come off Regent Street. They've got Hedden Street down here. I feel like we have to go down here. And there's Crown House down here. Of course Regent Street is part of the Crown Estate isn't it? Whereas obviously Mayfair is the Grosvenor Estate. Owned by the Dukes of Grosvenor which I was reading in the London Compendium. Grosvenor is from the old French. Grosvenor, Fat Hunter. Seems very apt. Look down the end of that street there, there's an old red telephone box. Can't be many of them in central London. Hedden Street looks nice. Little restaurants, cafes, etc. If something very strange has happened, and this is the first time you've stumbled upon my channel and watching one of my videos, <laughs> this is not quite how I usually make my videos. I'm doing this because of the rain, the heavy rain. So I'm just having a little unplanned stroll through Mayfair on my action camera, but Hopefully, usually, it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Although I do like the spontaneity of this. Starman. This must be a reference to David Bowie, I would have thought, right? So the area on the other side of, uh, of Regent Street there should be covered in part two of the Soho Walk, or in a Soho Walk. I don't really want to stray into territory now just shooting like this but um, I do plan to incorporate at least some of that in the next Soho video which will be coming soon I promise you 
And what's interesting, I think, is as you get nearer Piccadilly Circus, the shops become a little bit more, I was going to say down market, a little bit more high street. Here we are. I say Uniqlo, but I don't know if that's right. You know what I mean. Swallow Street is too good to resist, actually. I had a little peek. And I am very much drawn down here. Although the outdoor seating at Gaucho dominates it. You see the church spire at the end, which it must be on Piccadilly, I would have thought. Now this place here, Hagen claims to be the best coffee in town. Unfortunately for me, I just had one at the station at Leytonstone from Perky Blenders. Leighton and Walthamstow's own coffee roastery who make excellent coffee, so I have to test their theory another day. It's a shame we can't see these buildings better of this outfit. They've got a really beautiful facade. It's interesting, interesting architecture in Swallow Street. If you're thinking I'm skipping um, Piccadilly Circus, I will link you below to a walk I did. I think it was in 2020 actually when things just started to open up in that summer. Or oh no, actually it was October or I went around Piccadilly and caught the sunset there. It's a beautiful place in the sunset. We're not going to get a lovely sunset, but we are going to get the church. I think this is uh, St James's, isn't it? St James's Piccadilly, which is a famous church, and it's open. Piccadilly is one of London's finest thoroughfares. Such a glorious street, Piccadilly. And there's the, the water stones over there, the huge water stones, where I, I did a book signing there. Christmas 2013. That was a great night. James is Piccadilly. This is a church where they often have memorial services for sort of famous people and there's often talks and concerts here. They did come to a talk here many years ago. I'm just trying to remember who it was, but let's pop our heads inside, shall we? So we emerge from St. James's into German Street, which is, uh, I think, associated with its shirt makers, isn't it, German Street? Wonderful old street here. Again, I will save most of this for the Mayfair film. Given where our walk is heading, this is an interesting addition, actually, Prince's Arcade. I don't know this one. This building doesn't look that old. It's still a lovely little arcade, of course you've got a few of these around around Mayfair, Piccadilly. It is the uh, it is the area of the arcade and of course as I spoke about in my Paris video urban walking and arcades are intrinsically linked through well it was codified in Walter Benjamin's book the arcades project where he saw that the arcades of Paris with their gas lighting had given birth to a new type of urban character, the flaneur, the person who wanders aimlessly guided by their desires. And that was facilitated by spaces like this, these kind of very elaborate glass and mirrored and brightly lit indoor spaces within the city where you could walk and see people and draw in the sensations. Back on to Piccadilly. The rain's not so bad now. It still is raining, but it's not torrential. And we've emerged by Hatchard's Bookshop, which has been here, well, booksellers since 1797. Do you know what? I'm not entirely sure I've ever been in Hatchard's. Maybe I should pop my head inside. Hatchard's is a, is a delightful, a delightful bookshop, but I mean, but they didn't have my my book in there, even though it's it was published nine years ago. Even so, then well, I did see a couple of books there that I'm definitely thinking of uh, picking up at some point. I've got, reached the point at home now where I've got an embargo on new books until I get rid of some. They're actually piled up in my study where I where I work at home, and they're all over the house basically. And here we have the famous, the iconic. Fortnum and Mason, good place for like chutneys and jams and I guess pates. I've never had pate from there. Oh, I have actually. 
I did get out of a Fortnum's and Mason's hamper one Christmas. It was very nice. And there it is, the famous Royal Academy. What a grand, imposing building. Have I been in the Royal Academy? I think I've only ever been in there once, and that was for the now famous Sensation exhibition, what became known as Brit Art. I think I went there in 1997, just after I come back from Australia. That was quite a remarkable event, actually. That is not the place I was heading for today. It's just next door. Now, I didn't think the Christmas lights were supposed to be on this time of year. It's Today is the 8th of January. Twelfth night was the 5th. So I don't know what's going on here. Actually, before we get to our climactic destination, can we have a little look through the Piccadilly Arcade? Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Look, look at all the Christmas lights. Isn't it delightful? We'll just go for a little walk through there and come back to the side because it is so lovely. So this is the climactic destination of our walk today. The glorious Burlington Arcade. I hope I can still use my camera in there. It is patrolled by beetles. I imagine I'm not very fond of, uh, of filmmakers and vloggers. I'm not sure what the gold elephant is about. It is supporting some baubles. So the Burlington Arcade is uh, was built by George Cavendish, who was the Earl of Burlington. <laughs> I love the explanation that apparently he lived in Burlington House next door and that's now the Royal Academy. But it said that, because people used to wander around in the fields here, you had you know, Mayfair, the famous Mayfair, right? It was a place for leisure and entertainment. So he was sick of people tossing discarded oyster shells over his wall into his garden. So he built this. Not sure if sure that's the case. It was built in 1818 and opened in uh, 1819. So it's over 200 years old. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't see it written that it's the oldest in Britain, but surely it must be because the previous older ones are on continental Europe, particularly in Paris, in Brussels, some beautiful arcades that we visited when we were there back in the summer of 2022, ages ago. And it really is kind of sets a kind of standard really for the covered arcades that were to come. The other explanation is, is he wanted somewhere safe for his wife to go and shop in the dry, which is possibly a more plausible explanation so she didn't have to go too far. And it really is beautiful. Piccadilly Arcade is obviously very similar that we saw before, and there are a few other smaller ones around Piccadilly. And um, there are lots more actually around Britain. Leeds, I think, has a, a really good selection of old arcades. There's a couple of beauties in Birmingham and also in Norwich as well. They're all over the place. Um, yeah, I really love Burlington Arcade and I think that concludes this wet walk, this rainy walk. Unscheduled, unplanned, off the cuff, on the hoof, into my action camera. I hope you don't mind <laughs> the change in service, the change in uh, style this week. Obviously, normal service will be resumed next week. We'll be <laughs> back to normal. Well, if, unless it actually decides to bucket down with rain again. Thank you so much for coming on that rainy stroll around the edges of Mayfair. Hope you enjoyed it. I had, I really enjoyed it actually. It was brilliant. Um, as I always like to say, I look forward to seeing you in the next walk wherever that may be. And this was never on the agenda at all. So really, who knows?